Uh, so here we are to the last part or the last leg of the journey, which is the question: How do compressions in the air become sound in our head? It's a pretty interesting question, and we know that anything to be perceived by our brain finally has to become electricity. That's the language the brain understands. The brain understands only electric impulses. So how was the sound going to get converted into that? Let's find out. So what we know is that we ha- we we all have this outer ear called the pinna. So if you were to watch what we notice here, the compressions are going to reach this outer ear called the pinna, which directs the sound inside, takes it through a canal, and makes it reach what's called the ear drum or the tympanic membrane. Now this membrane feels those compressions and rarefactions. It kind of vibrates along with them. That's why it's called a drum. You know, it behaves like one. It's a membrane, very thin membrane stretched out. Yeah. So it begins to start compressing and you know relaxing based on that. Now that is not much. So what happens is that that compression is amplified many, many times, usually about twenty times, by three bones inside. It's called the hammer, the anvil, and the stirrup. So these three bones amplify that little sound that you have, the little compression and rarefaction, and that part of this amplification happens in what we call the middle ear. So the middle ear from the outer ear, the pinna, it goes inside. These three bones make up the inner ear. They amplify the sound. So the outer ear's purpose, bring it in. Direct collect the sound, bring it in. The middle ear's purpose is to amplify the sound, and after this amplification occurs, the sound is allowed inside the inner ear by what's called the oval window, and this oval window puts it inside the inner ear, which is called the cochlea, where this sound is converted into electricity. Now you would find out how exactly this is done. There is a fluid inside the cochlea which begins to start vibrating at this level, at the same range. Of That which the air vibrates and then the bones vibrate, this fluid picks up this vibration. So eventually, we're trying to create a wave inside a fluid, and then that is converted into electrical impulses. We will not go into the exact details of how that is done. That's a little too much detail for this purpose here. So what do we have? An outer ear, a middle ear, and an inner ear. Outer ear, the pinna, directs inside. Inner ear, hammer, anvil, and stirrup, amplify. Cochlea, the inner ear, sends it to the brain. Now what happens is that this electrical impulse goes through what's called the auditory nerve to the brain, and there it's in- interpreted as sound. Now that this overall system put together is how we perceive sound and hear it. There's a little tube there called the eustachian tube, which kind of connects our hearing to our nasal cavity. And we know that ENT doctors exist, right? Ear, nose, and throat. They're all put together because they're kind of connected inside. So that little tube connects from the inner ear to the nasopharynx, as it's called. So, but it's not really very important for our purpose here, right? So, for our purpose, what we observe is that compressions in the air are converted into electrical impulses. Really interesting. 